All right, hello everybody, welcome. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar about confidential hacker power security testing with the HackerOne Challenge. With us is Chris Schilling, HackerOne's Director of Product Marketing. We're gonna get right down to business. We wanna get you in and out probably in about 30 minutes today, but we'll reserve plenty of time for Q&A at the end with Chris. So with that, uh, folks, if you have questions during the webinar, there's actually a question box on the right-hand side of the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, you can just write your question in there and we'll be able to answer that. We got some queued up for Chris. Uh, we wanna make sure and uh, take advantage of the time we have with him today. So get your questions out. Um, feel free to send those throughout the webinar as well. And with that, Chris, welcome. Thank you so much for, um, for being here today and I'm gonna hand it over to you. Great, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Schilling. Uh, I'm Director of Product Marketing at HackerOne. And today I'm going to be talking about a new product offering that we have, uh, HackerOne Challenge, which is hacker-powered security testing. So let me start off with a real quick executive summary. Uh, I'm going to introduce HackerOne Challenge, talk a little bit about what we built, why we built it, and why we think it matters. I'm gonna go into a, a little bit more detail about hacker selection and, uh, and how we choose the best of the best for HackerOne Challenge, because it's a common theme that comes up when we're talking about this with prospects and customers. I'm going to discuss why customers buy challenges, uh, including a couple of examples of, of existing happy customers that are using challenges today. And finally, I'll close out with uh, what you can expect, sort of the uh, summary report uh, and the data that we'll hand over to you at the end uh, after, you've, uh, after you've purchased. So here's the agenda represented in question format. And let's start with the basics. So we're all engaged in a balancing act in the security world. And, and some days this is easier than others. Every security engineer knows that the world is not a perfect place, software included. Um, software is a lot like the people who build it, it's, uh, it's flawed. And we're all balancing risk with the resources that we have. We all wish that we could address and control every issue with software, but even in the largest enterprises, this just simply isn't possible. Every application has bugs or snakes or whatever. Uh, and there are always pressures to push out releases faster, meet tighter deadlines and otherwise rush new product. This balancing act, I think, is, is, is a skill that good InfoSec people have. Uh, you know, great InfoSec people are, are exceptional at it. But that doesn't mean that we don't want to know what's out there. And, and I've been to a few events since joining HackerOne, and at every one, I, I always hear the same thing from InfoSec uh, professionals of pretty much every level of, of experience and from, from every vertical. From individual contributors up to CISOs, they all say that they would rather know what's out there. They want, to know, uh, they want to know the vulnerabilities. They want to know the issues. But one of the biggest concerns they have is what other people see in the application, what third-party hackers can find. Uh, so, so really what every CISO and InfoSec veteran wants to know is what, what other people know about their application. If you're in the risk assessment or risk management business, that's how you come up with the smartest use of your internal resources. You know everything that's wrong with your app surface. You know what others think is wrong with it, and you allocate your resources accordingly. Hacker Powered Security was founded on this principle, uh, that you want to know what hackers know, and the best way to learn is to listen to them. Specifically, we at HackerOne build security tests and continuous security solutions, like vulnerability disclosure programs or bug bounty programs, that show our customers what the best way hack hat hackers can find in their application service. We've done this for some high-profile public customers like the U.S. Department of Defense, General Motors, Uber, and Airbnb, and we've done it for many more private, discrete customers that we can't name. Originally, all our products offered continuous security. We, we had this perspective that every organization should be testing its software all the time because many organizations release software all the time, and that should be the only way to purchase hacker-powered security. So we built bug bounty and vulnerability disclosure programs to be always available, and we didn't think to offer a time box version publicly. And, and this is an area where our customers uh, help change our mind. They saw the potential to use hacker-powered security in ways that we didn't envision. They wanted to supplement penetration tests, they wanted to set up internal and external competitions, they, and they wanted to test application services before they went public. So like any good company, we wisened up uh, all the organizations here that found success with the challenge. So now we're launching the same uh, product to the public. And here's what you can expect as a general timeline. Uh, HackerOne Challenge will last about four weeks. For the first week, we'll work with you and your team to prepare your service. We pair you with one of our experienced technical consultants to help you tackle the basics. This is stuff like defining what domains are in scope, uh, setting bounty amounts. Some companies want to incentivize certain 
types of vulnerabilities, and we're happy to work with you on that. Behind the scenes, we invite hackers that are proven experts on services like yours to a private challenge. And we build a generic program. <clears throat> the hackers don't know who the challenge is for, but they appreciate the courtesy notice that there's going to be a fresh target. Um, it helps them with time management. It gets them excited. Uh, it's, it's something that we do that, that our hackers really like. Meanwhile, we're working with you to make sure you're comfortable with how we're handling everything. This is a fully managed program by your services team, but we default to disclosing what we're doing. So you, you have the info to stay in control. When we confirm the details, we, we change a generic program to a customer specific program and, and then we notify the hackers. And now it's on. The, the, the pre-selected hackers who, we, who have accepted invites can hack and report issues in your domains. During the second and third weeks, hackers are constantly checking your predefined domain for bugs, vulnerabilities. Um, they're testing things. They're, they're uh, inputting data in, in certain forms. They're submitting anything they find, all of the reports via our platform, categorizing them according to CWE and CVSS, and detailing exactly what they found and how they found it. Meanwhile, our triage team is validating these bugs on your behalf. They'll also pay attention to what hackers are saying, and, and they'll be on the lookout for some edge cases. For example, if hackers find several severe vulnerabilities, they may exhaust the budget prematurely on a particular domain. So after we close hacking, we take that last week to spin up a custom report detailing what we found. We clean up the reports from our hackers to make sure that they meet our highest standards, and then we set up a meeting with you to review the results. At the end of the day, you get the report. It's not dissimilar to conventional security pen testing reports that tells you what our hackers found, how they found it, and how serious it is according to an industry standard taxonomy. We also give you access to the same data on our platform if you're interested in seeing how things work, though the information you'll find there is a duplicate for, what, for what's in the report. And we'll show you the way forward to working with hackers in the future. So that's Hacker One Challenge in a nutshell. But one of the first questions that comes up for new prospects is, how can I trust these guys? Right? How do I know that you have the right people for the job? And that's why I'd like to discuss hacker selection in a little bit more detail. Start off with this guy right here. Here's a hacker. And, and specifically, this is Sean Melia. He goes by Meals on Hacker One. Meals is one of our best hackers, so he's a good representative of the type of person that we generally invite to our challenge programs. And Meals, like all our hackers, has a reputation score that includes Signal, Impact, his overall activity, and his most recent activity. Signal represents his accuracy, how often his reports are valid and reported accurately. And this is a very high score. It's about 95th percentile for Meals. Uh, he also has a really high Impact score. And Impact represents the average severity of his bugs. So in this case, Meals reports generally high severity bugs. We have a number of hackers who will go after lower severity bugs. They'll have a lower impact score, uh, even if they're signal, even if they're very often accurate. This is about a 90th percentile impact score. So it's not quite as good as a signal, but it, it suggests that Meals typically finds a good stuff. Finally, reputation, which is a cumulative assessment of how many bugs and reports Meals has submitted to Hacker One. Um, on, on this front, Meals is actually number two overall on our platform, so that's pretty exceptional. And at the bottom, we have activity, which shows some of his more recent targets. You can see he's working on a few different programs, including some of our higher profile, more sensitive customers at DOD and NGM. And the Department of Defense is a, a Hacker One Challenge customer. But that's not all. We, we actually know a little bit more than that about our hackers, because we get to know them. Uh, we want to make certain that they stay, they stay successful. We know Sean Mealy has LinkedIn profile. It's available on his, in his Hacker One profile. Uh, we've also had dinner with him. We've invited him to our office. We've asked him for feedback on our platforms. He's passed background checks for secure targets like the Department of Defense. And our top tier hackers have even received awards. Last year, you can see that we commissioned comic book covers uh, to represent each of our elite, including uh, the three gentlemen that you see here, Sean Melia, Franz Rosen, and Mark Litchfield. And, and all this is to say that we know our hackers pretty well. We have more, val more valuable information on them than any other platform, and we do our best to keep tabs on what they like and what they don't like. While hackers tend to be individualistic, they're also great at sharing information. So we have a hacker success team devoted to listening to our hackers and understanding uh, what they think about our platform, what they think about programs. And we take all that knowledge and use that to sync programs with hackers. So when you have specific priorities, things that you're looking to go after, specific web services, we'll match those services with people that we've already that have already proven to be successful on Hacker One, and have already proven to know what to look for on platforms like yours, and this creates a virtuous cycle. 
Well, one thing that we've learned is that, is that our hackers aren't coin operated. And, and that's not to say that money isn't a big reason as to why they hack, but it's one of many big reasons. They, they appreciate the challenge uh, as much as they appreciate the income. And just behind those two, they, they do it out of a sense of, of altruism because they believe that, that finding these things and reporting them to companies is the right thing to do. When hackers feel like they're respected and treated fairly, they're more likely to spend time on your program. And so we talk to our prospects and we help them understand this. And this is one of the reasons why Hacker One Challenge uh, has been so successful, because we work with the hackers on your behalf to make sure that at least some of these reasons are present and that they feel like they're being listened to and respected. Um, it gives them the chance to see how, uh, see how, uh, it gives you the chance, excuse me, to see how quickly, um, you know, hackers will respond when a program is being run according to best practices with professional triage, well-scoped domains. And we show the way and, and the ideas that uh, in the future, our customers will be able to manage a program in a similar fashion. And here are some quotes uh, from hackers uh, that, are, that are happy with this arrangement. And I'll just highlight that, that one of the big things here is, is providing interesting services, but, but it's also about communicating with them and being super clear and super transparent with them. Um, that is one of the things that we'll do on your behalf and it'll ensure a good experience for them um, and, and increase the likelihood that they'll spend more time uh, looking for the hardest to find bugs on, on your platform. So let's move on from hacker selection to customer stories. I'll talk a little bit about some of the customers that have found value from Hacker One Challenge today. As we discussed before, Hacker One Challenge is built with customer in input. We listened to our customers and we developed a product that addressed a very specific need they had. They wanted to have pre-screened hackers test web surfaces and they wanted this to be done in a short period of time so that they could have the output, uh, not in a matter of, of months, but in a matter of weeks or, or one month. The US Department of Defense is not only one of our flagship customers, it's also one of the best advocates for challenge programs. And I should preface this by saying the Department of Defense actually runs a vulnerability disclosure program, a continuous program, an active page on HackerOne that invites Good Samaritan hackers to report issues as they come up and, and using the Department of Defense's applications. There's no bounty attached, but people will still report things because they, they feel a sense of altruism. They, they appreciate the challenge of, of hacking the federal government uh, websites. But, but here, Department of, the Department of Defense was, uh, was a customer that, that saw very clear value in, in challenges. They have a ton of surfaces. They wanted to space out the testing, and they wanted our help to ensure they had control over who was invited. So we kept them in complete control throughout. We performed background checks according to their specs. We created an application process that met the requirements. We limited for other variables uh, like geographic origin. Um, and when the program went live, we managed, uh, we managed the program, we triaged bugs, we validated them, we, we dealt with the duplicates and interacted with the hackers on their behalf. And the program has been an incredible success. Uh, just this past March, there was a Pentagon spokesman, Hunter Price, that uh, told a reporter that there was a 10x return on investment, 1,000% uh, ROI, over conventional pen testing that they had with their existing contractor. So they, they've, set, they've set up more challenges to come. They're, it's not just one challenge. Uh, we just helped them launch a Hack the Air Force, for example, which will be a completely new program. I'm also going to talk about another challenge customer here, uh, this time a financial services customer, and, and um, I can't name this customer, so I'm gonna give an anonymized example, but we can provide uh, a little bit more detail if, if people have questions. Uh, this customer ran a time-bound challenge relatively recently, and, and they already had a long-term continuous security program with us. They, they were already a very successful uh, bug bounty program. What they wanted from the, from the challenge is to light a spark with hackers. Uh, they, they weren't so concerned about about budget, they were concerned about identifying as many vulnerabilities as possible in a short period of time. And they ran a competitive challenge and set a very high budget, and this turned out to, to be a huge success. Uh, they paid out over $80,000 to hackers in a very short period of time. These hackers were testing hardened surfaces, uh, surfaces that, that had been tested before by professionals. Um, and one of the great things that, that, that the customer noted was that the hackers were able to find many more higher severity bugs than traditional security tests and traditional pen tests. Uh, and that was super exciting because that's exactly what they were looking for. So when customers are considering challenges versus our conventional uh, continuous program, there are three common themes uh, that, we, that we highlight to customers that are, are good, good fits for, for HackOne Challenge. 
One is that you're okay with a hands-off approach. We manage all the aspects of the challenge for you. And, and for the customers that are new to this world of hacker-powered security, or for customers that prefer to outsource services and triage, this is a great solution. Another is that the customer or prospect is interested in, in a controlled and private program with only a small number of hackers involved. So this isn't really the kind of situation where an open, continuous bug bounty program, uh, like what we run for some of our public bug bounty uh, customers, uh, would be a good solution. This is a, uh, uh, these, these prospects and customers are almost always interested in controlling the list of people who can be invited and, and may even have certain variables that they want us to, to control for as well. And the third is that they come to us with a specific time frame and a specific budget. Um, it's not a requirement, but, but CISOs and CIOs generally like the certainty of knowing that the program will cost no more than X thousand dollars. No different than getting a, a price quote for a penetration test. And we could do that with a time-bound challenge. Well, an open-ended uh, annual program may require additional funding up front, and there may be spikes or, or periods when, when interest is very high and, and additional funding is necessary. For customers that are looking to self-manage public offerings, we generally point them to our other products, our continuous bug bounty and vulnerability disclosure programs. So now let's talk about what you get at the end. Um, after you've run a successful HackerOne challenge, you finished out your four weeks, you'll hear about what we found via three different mediums. Specifically, we'll, we'll deliver you a custom written report that details the vulnerabilities and the severity uh, of each. This is analogous to a traditional pen test report. We'll also provide you with read-only access to our platform. So the same data is in our platform. That's how hackers are submitting these reports and how we're triaging them. This brings you a little bit closer to understanding how we handle our continuous security offerings. And we can even talk you through how reports are submitted, how our platform makes this easier, how we make it simpler to categorize uh, vulnerabilities according to industry standards, all that good stuff. Finally, we'll sit down with you and, and we'll talk you through what happened and, and what we found to be successful. That also includes a conversation about how to continue to engage with hackers, whether via paid bounties or simply by providing a clear vulnerability disclosure policy for the Good Samaritans out there. Here are a couple screenshots of the report. Um, what you'll see is that it's inspired by our team's experience in conventional security and penetration testing. It should look very similar to InfoSec professionals out there that have, uh, that have purchased penetration test reports before. We provide categories. We use industry standards, CWE, CVSS, uh, to, to assess vulnerabilities. There's no special proprietary kind of language you're familiar with. So here are some figures, and, and I'm including these figures to show we, that we can get uh, hacker-powered security tests um, and we can deliver them at an entry-level price point similar to what conventional security companies charge for a simple pen test. Uh, this should be a baseline. Uh, we can do much more for this for customized tests, but but this is our starting point. This is designed for new customers, people that are new to hacker-powered security, to get started very quickly and to feel like they, they see value at the end of four weeks. So let me uh, close with a couple of, of uh, summary points and then I'll open it up for Q&A. Um, so HackerOne Challenges, we built to show you what hackers know, uh, to, to help you understand what hackers know in a setting which allows you to control access uh, and which in which you can control also uh, visibility of the program. We match you and any HackerOne Challenge uh, customer with our best hackers. Um, we also manage their interactions and experiences in the sense that we talk to them, we communicate with them, we listen to them when they're concerned about uh, vulnerabilities or, or certain things possibly being out of scope, all on your behalf. And we record all that in our, our, in our platform. Um, we have customers in very sensitive verticals uh, for uh, the U.S. defense industry, um, as well as in financial services. We also have customers in uh, the conventional kind of venture-backed uh, startups and high-tech, um, the Airbnbs and Shopify's. Um, finally, you get you get a, a report uh, with industry standard uh, terminology. You get platform access at the end, and we can do this for a very very competitive price. Uh, the entry-level price is uh, is 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 quite good. 